This might be the prettiest room Disney has ever made, but is it worth that hefty price tag? Today we're gonna find out. So today we are going to be checking out all of these fun updates here at the Grand Floridian and taking a peek at those newer DVC Mary Poppins inspired rooms, which I'm so excited about. But if you're staying here and just like any other Disney resort, you're gonna have to start with check-in. Online check-in is available prior to your stay. So if you're checking in though, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna head over to your My Disney Experience app and you're gonna click the three little bars on the far right at the bottom. From there, you're gonna click Resort Hotel and it's gonna take you straight into check-in. You're gonna go through that process. It's really simple and you can actually put in your phone number after you hit start check-in so that way they can text you when your room is ready. Pretty straightforward and you can put in any requests that you might need at the time. Now check-in is at 3 p.m. They're gonna text you when that room is ready and they'll tell you your room number in the text message as well as give you a map to the resort. You can also find your resort room number in the app as well in case you forget it. You can request early but it's not always gonna be guaranteed. So if you're gonna arrive early, kind of be prepared to fill in your day, run around a little bit, you might not be able to head straight to your room. So with that early check-in, you can also leave your luggage with luggage services so that way if you are having a bit of fun around the parks or just around your resort, you don't have to lug it with you. So this is the Port Cochere. If you're coming through Amir's taxi, if you have airport shuttles, things like that, or if you're just Ubering or even driving your car, this is where you're gonna come up. Um, it's pretty simple. You pull right under here. You're actually gonna see some of the vehicles they use for the Disney weddings here to the left, like the carriage, which I just think is so neat. And then lots of construction, which is actually why we're here. It's undergoing some changes, mainly just kind of a facelift. The biggest change we've seen is the room we're about to see today, but lots of exciting stuff. So we're gonna head straight inside check out the lobby and then head to our room all right here we are the beautiful lobby you can actually see a lot of Disney touches even in the floor there's Pluto and let's see Minnie's down here lots of nice subtle Disney touches not super in your face but just enough to like if you're a huge Disney fan you can really really enjoy it you can also see check-in is here to the right if you choose to do that or if you need assistance um, rather than doing it online that's also available now a lot of times they will have pianists playing live music they don't have them right now but you can definitely ask the concierge or even the people at check-in the cast members at check-in and they will let you know roughly what times they're expected to play now there's actually quite a few things that we're going to talk about but let's head over to the room first and then we'll check everything out when we come back Okay, so we are gonna head over to check out the room. This is the path we're taking. Now there are quite a few rooms here at the Grand Floridian and I won't lie to you, I've gotten lost before. So fingers crossed we don't get lost this time. Luckily though, there are maps all around the resort as well as the one that they texted me on my phone. Now during the Grand Floridian's renovation period, they have taken several of these buildings and turned them into the DVC buildings. I'm really excited. This is one of those rooms that I never thought I would really get to stay in as I'm not a DVC member. So we're super excited to check it out. But all of that being said, you do not have to be a DVC member to stay in the DVC suites. You do have to pay for it. Um, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive than what you would anticipate if you're not a DVC member. So we don't always recommend it, uh, just paying outright for it. But if you really, really wanna stay here and you're not a member, that is an option for you. Now, one thing I really love is all of these subtle touches of Mary around the lobby areas as well. And so you can actually see some of the artist renderings and kind of sketches for the movie concept art, if you will. So to head into your room, you can actually use the mobile room key, which you can find on your phone, a magic band or a standard key if you need one. If you need that standard key, you are gonna have to stop by check-in and grab one, but you have all three of those options. They're really pretty easy. Okay, so immediately you get into the room and the first thing you see is this beautiful just entryway, getting ready kind of vanity area. And I wanna show you the details because I am a huge Mary Poppins fan. So this whole room is just like, I'm like salivating, like I love this. So let's look at this area first. So first there is so much just beautiful artwork of flowers and birds, and it's not overly Mary Poppins, it's very subtle. And then you have this lovely massive mirror where you can see me do this, then you can see me do this, and then you can, I mean, I can even touch my toes. This thing is so huge, you can see everything. Down here to the right, you're gonna find this lovely little box. And that's where your hair dryer is in case you need it, which is just nice and I don't know, very classy. 
There is also plugins over here. So if you do want to get ready over here or you want to charge your phones and things, there's plugins over here, which is very nice. So to add to that like vanity feeling, there is a really beautiful stool, which I will pull out and show you like this whole bench, the design on it. And then there's also more um, plugins underneath. So it slides out really easily. And then it just has this really beautiful stitching along the side, which almost in a weird way, I know it's not the same as her bag, but just reminiscent of that. And just the whole color scheme just gives very much Mary Poppins. And then the entire vanity is like gold decorated with marble touches and it's just, it's just lovely. I mean, I'm rolling around on the floor so I can sit here and show this to you. Now across from the vanity area is a bathroom. And one thing I do want to point out that I think is neat is there is a sliding door to the bathroom. So that way if somebody's sleeping, but you want to get ready, you can block that light. And then look at this mirror. It's massive. One thing to note, double sinks, which is very nice. Um, but look at the detailing on this mirror. It's the first thing I noticed when I came into the room. It is just so beautiful. It's intricate, it's delicate. And again, it's like all gold finishes, which is very, very nice. Here to the right, you have your lovely makeup mirror that all Disney rooms have. You can turn off and on and they have two sides. So normal side, very lovely. And then boom, crazy how large. Below that is where you're going to find some more plugins, which is always helpful, especially if you're coming with a larger party and then tissues in case you need them. I mean, I'll probably cry watching Disney movies tonight. So that's really nice to have. Along the rest of the vanity is where you're going to be able to find that Disney Resort sea salt bath soap, as well as some H2O products, which if you don't know, um, these are going away. So grab them as you will. And one thing that was weird is they have cooling aloe gel. This is not something that I have seen in other Disney Resort rooms that we've stayed in. So so as strange as that feels, I really liked that and thought it was neat. And then next to our lovely vanity kit, more plugins. Underneath the vanity is where you're going to find some storage as well as your towels, um, any hand towels you might need. And then of course, if you need more than just this, you can always call uh, guest services. Here along this wall is where you're going to find a lovely golden uh, towel hook, but then one of my favorite pieces of art in the room. It's just really nice. It's the fair and it reminds me of Mary Poppins Returns, the very end of that movie. Just there's nowhere to go but up and like how nice that is. And then below that you're also going to find another towel rack. So opposite of the sink area, you're going to find another door. So that way if someone needs to shower while someone else is getting ready, you can just slide that closed um, and then you can head inside. You're going to find more towels here to the left on this lovely rack. Again, gold. I'm just impressed. Okay. You're going to find your restroom is in here as well. And then this amazing shower that I want in my own home. It just is lovely. Again, gold finishes, but really nice, lovely, um, blue, like blue tiles. And then it's a big bathtub too. So if you want to relax, this is a great place to do it. They also have that classic Disney resort shampoo, conditioner, and body wash, um, with cute little Mickey's. And I love using this stuff. It is for me personally, not the best for like my hair. And I still choose to use it because that smell is so reminiscent for me. It's so nostalgic. Love these guys. And just because we can, I do want to test the water pressure. See what this looks like. Oh, the cut is out of this one. That's how to switch it right here. Ooh, it's cold. Oh, it looks nice. Like your traditional Disney water pressure, maybe not the strongest, but it'll be nice. It'll get the job done. So now we are going to head out of the bathroom and into the main living area. How fancy, I know. Here to the left is where you're going to find your thermostat. Please feel free to change it. For some reason as a kid, I, I thought you weren't allowed to, and that's not true. You, you're the one staying here, so you need to change it. Then you're gonna find this kind of little breakfast nook. So first off, you have a microwave, which is always nice to have on a Disney room, especially if you have like leftovers and you've been out to eat, and you cannot find in every single Disney resort room. So those are always very nice to have. And then down here below, they have what is like a coffee cure, is a Keurig machine. Um, which is very nice. And then your ice bucket, as well as some really nice wine glasses and coffee cups. Below that is where you're going to find the K cups for your Keurig. And they even have a wine opener. They have plates and bowls and utensils, um, sweet and low, sugar, anything you might need to just make a nice coffee, which is always helpful before you rope drop the parks. And then even below this, a fridge, which again, not always available in Disney stuff. So very nice to have, especially 
if you've got those leftovers. No, this is something most people might not really super care about, but again, I'm just like very excited about this room. Um, they aren't brand new, but they're new to me. This is the first time I've been here and they've only been around for a year and a half. Not, not a super long time, maybe close to two now, but very nice. So this is one of my favorite details in the whole room. Look at this wallpaper behind. It's just so nice. The Banks children are there, Mary's there. And then down here you can see her umbrella. And it's just so like, I think it's so subtle and so nice. And my favorite thing in the world is like subtle Disney touches that maybe not everyone would catch. So this has been really, really lovely. Okay, so as you're walking into the room, the first thing that immediately catches your eye is these the stunning bed. I mean, I I know I'm partial, okay? I know. But look how pretty. So the headboard is like an almost blue, velvety, just like lovely deep blue color. Here to the left, and actually on either side of the bed, you're gonna find a nice little reading light. And then just nice little pretty touches. Um, there are always gonna be, you know, your classic Disney pillows. But look at this decor pillow. Look how cute this throw pillow is. It has her penguins, and then it also has her umbrella. So just very, very cute. To either side of each bed, you're going to find this beautiful little light. And then below that, kind of a, not a side table, more of a side stand. It looks like it would just fit like your phone and maybe a drink. And then below that, you're gonna be able to find some plugins, which is very nice. So there's a plugin for your phone, and then there's also a USB plugin, and then a different kind of outlet. So very, very nice. You can plug in multiple things over here. Now below each bed is actually quite a bit of space. So if you're concerned about how you're gonna keep your suitcases, no worries. There is lots of space under this one and under the other one as well. So you should be, be able to just kind of slide your stuff underneath there. Now to the left is this really lovely closet. Um, again, it just has those nice subtle details, flowers, birds, but it's kind of a French door closet and it's a little bit smaller than you would initially think. So in the closet is where you're going to find extra pillows and blankets. Here to the left is a laundry a form if you can, in case you need to send some of that off. And then your lovely Disney robes, which Quincy and I love. There's also a stand if you don't wanna put your luggage on the ground. And then there's also, if you need it, a broom, which is, you know, always helpful. Now, if you're looking for that full length mirror, it's here. It's a little bit cumbersome, I guess, to kind of like, kind of have to be in the closet to figure it out but here it is full-size mirror and it's not as big so like I can't do much but you can see me do this oh that was a high five you were supposed to oh <laughs> So outside of the closet here, there is more storage to the right, which we can always appreciate a bunch of Disney storage. Um, just several shelves in here, and then you also can find your steamer in here, and you can find your um, safe in case you want to put your things away, which I often do. Now in between the beds, you're going to find just that nice classic nightstand, which has a really lovely lamp. It's kind of hard to see, but look at just the little details, the flowers, the wind blowing in. Below there though, you're going to find the light switches for the um, night lights on either side of your bed. You're going to find that nice Disney phone in case you need anything. And then also down here is the information to help you find out about dining in your room, having some room service. Um, you can find breakfast and dinner over here. Then the remote for your TV, telephone in case you might need any numbers, anything like that. And then again, just more storage here inside the drawers. And there's two of them. Here is that second bed in case you just wanted to see it. Very much the same as the first with the same little details on either side. Also, this is maybe a strange detail to really be excited about, but there's like a really pretty rug underneath both of the beds. The entire room is, um, hardwood so it's just really nice to see that beautiful like almost watercolor watercolor looking rug very cute now across from the beds is where you're going to find that lovely disney smart tv below that is where you're going to find hey disney a disney and amazon um collaboration that allows you just to kind of talk to your amazon alexa you can make mornings more magical as disney likes to say they will give you the weather they'll have a character greet your kiddos in the morning or even you they'll tell you jokes they'll tell you nighttime stories i mean there's a ton of stuff that this will do if you're not entirely sure what all it can do you literally can say hey disney what do you do? And it will tell you everything. It'll give you those full menu options. But we also know that not everybody's like 
super comfortable with that and maybe it makes you feel a little weird that something's kind of listening to you so you can unplug it if that's not something you're interested in which is not a problem at all and if it doesn't like overtly bother you but you don't want it listening to you you can just turn the microphone off as well there is also some really nice information that you can have here in case you want to learn more about it once you start to use it or once you get to your resort room they have that information here so this dresser is just lovely. It's like a nice white marble. They also have a thing that teaches you how to open the sofa bed here. And then they have that classic little Disney pamphlet that tells you everything that's going on. Now there are four drawers. They're pretty spacious. So if you wanna unpack, get a little comfy, you're definitely able to do that. Or even just throw a smaller bag in here to get it out of the way. There's four of those. There's also a little bit of room underneath if you have some smaller bags that you kind of want to slide out of the way, but definitely not big enough for like big pieces of luggage. Next to the TV is just two really lovely pieces of art. There right here is Mary flying in towards Cherry Tree Lane and it's just so nice and it makes me think of the ride that never happened in Epcot and I wish that it happened and frankly I want these in my house. Below those two pieces of art though there is a nice little table if you want to kind of relax on the couch. Um, just again get things out of the way which I really like to do just a place to kind of put your things and then there is this nice blue couch with two pillows on the side but all is not as it seems. It's definitely a single bed meant for one adult or one kiddo, and it is, it looks like a street jacket or so like a gurney. I'm gonna un undo those so you can see it better. But just a nice little comfy, cozy small bed if you wanna squeeze up to five adults in here. So that is all of the little details here inside the room, but there's one really important part that I'm very excited to show you here outside. So here outside is what I think is probably the most exciting view I have ever had in Disney World. This is the view from our balcony. So you can see the rest of the Grand Floridian through here. That is actually the other DVC building, I believe. And then you can see the wedding chapel over here. I'm covering it with my hand, I'm so sorry. You can see the wedding chapel. You can see the new um, Polynesian DVC build and then the whole Poly Resort, the entire Disney Polynesian Resort, just right there, just casually hanging out, being beautiful on the water. And this is just lovely. Now, of course, all of the rooms are not gonna have this view, but if you're lucky enough to have this experience, you do have a chance at this view, which is very cool. Now, over here to the left, you're probably wondering, where is Magic Kingdom? It's over there. It's all the way back, because you can even see the TTC right over there. Is like the makings of the TTC. Now over here we have two chairs and a nice little table if you want to have coffee out here and it's actually really spacious like I'm surprised how much room there is out here. Um, so if you had or you wanted to request I bet there's another chair that could fit. I mean this is just lovely. This was like a bucket list thing so to be able to like come and stay here and see these rooms of this character that I love so much with this view is just crazy. Okay, the only other little detail that I don't think I've talked about is the chandelier up here. And it's a little bit hard to see, but these are what looks like nightingale birds. They're glass and they're so delicate, but then there's one little penguin. It's just so cute and dainty and very like, again, subtle Disney. If you're gonna do bed science for safety reasons, don't wear a clip, because you'll hit your head and will really hurt. But it's time for bed science with just Emma, because Quincy isn't with me right now, so. Okay, ready? One, two. Yeah. <sighs> that felt nice. Now this is a little bit nicer, I think, than your traditional Disney bed, because this is, again, a DVC room. But this is it's like just the right amount of firmness, but kind of like you bounce when you first land. This would be very comfortable after a really long day at the parks. Pillow. All right. So if Quincy were here, she would say, this is a good Disney pillow. It rises around you, really supports your head. I mean, look at that fluff. These are not my favorite kind of pillows. I know how I feel, I'm very particular. This is gonna serve most people. Okay, one more bed science. Oh, I sat down. So don't, Fry and I made the mistake once of like fully throwing ourselves onto a couch bed, which was silly. Don't do that. When you have a couch bed, just do slow bed science. Just lay down, keep it slow. This is definitely a couch bed for sure. It, I'm actually sinking into it a little bit, which is kind of nice. It's very soft, 
Mm-hmm. Um, softer than most couch beds. It's an Ethan Allen. The label was on it, if that means anything to you. Um, but yeah, definitely a couch bed. Not going to be your most comfortable, but for younger kiddos, they won't notice because it's cozy. And then if you're exhausted, you definitely won't notice, which is a pretty high probability. That's the whole room. And I love it so much. And this is so neat. And I, I love it. I know a lot of people are kind of against the Disney integration of characters into some of these classic rooms like here at the Grand Floridian but this is so subtle and still very classy and chic in my opinion it still feels very Grand Floridian and unless you just love 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 Mary Poppins you're probably not going to catch all of those little details so it's not really going to get in your way personally I love it I think this room is beautifully done and I'm very excited to just get to be here. Now there's gonna be a few different types of stays in a few different locations. There's gonna be the outer building rooms, the main building rooms, plus club level, which features king size or one and two bedroom suites. There's also gonna be the garden view, lagoon view, or theme park view, which of course is gonna vary in price. Now when it comes to pricing, rates are going to vary and you can often find special offers, but they're not always going to be special offers, so make sure to keep your eyes peeled. Now for those outer building rooms, you're gonna range from anywhere from $780 tonight to $1 1560 a night. For standard room club level, it's going to range anywhere from 920 a night to roughly $2,070 a night. Now, deluxe room club level is going to range from 1260 to 2370 And then those suites are going to range anywhere from roughly 1640 to 4430 Yes, you heard me right. Which, of course, those are all rates. They can vary. You can find them for a little bit less or a little bit more, but... Traditionally, that's kind of what you're gonna see for pricing over here. Now, the room we are checking out today is technically part of the DVC, the Disney Vacation Club, um, and those are going to kind of be paid a different way. So if you're a DVC member, you get points and you use points per night when booking. So as far as that info goes, it's gonna be resort studios with standard lagoon and theme park views. They're gonna kind of range anywhere from 16 to 24 points per night. For the deluxe studios with standard and length views, it's gonna be roughly 17 to 20 points per night. The one bedroom villas with standard and length views anywhere from 33 to 44 points per night. Two bedroom villa with standard and lake views is gonna be 46 to 55 points per night. And then the three bedroom grand villa with lake views is gonna be 112 points per night, roughly. Okay, so we finished up with the room. It was beautiful, we love it so much. So we made our way back to the lobby. We're gonna check out what else you can find here in the Grand Floridian. So first things first, we're gonna head here to the back. This is Curious or Clothiers, or Clothers. I don't think that I say it quite right, but this is where you're going to find things like men and women's designer clothing, such as Tommy Bahama and Ralph Lauren polo, things like that. You can also find those incredible robes that you can find in the room, as well as some Grand Floridian uh, specific merch, which is just very cute. And Lily Pulitzer. So right next to Curiouser Clothers is where you're gonna find the Garden View Tea Room. So the Garden View Tea Room is actually kind of a lounge. This is a first level tea room that serves afternoon tea daily as well as princess tea with Princess Aurora several times a week. Now, they used to do that, unfortunately. This has not reopened since the pandemic. This is one of the things I would love to see come back because just look how beautiful this space is and it was such a really fun and interesting kind of experience that you could have here, but still not back quite yet. Continuing on where you are going to find Sandy Cove gifts and sundries. This is going to be more of your typical Disney gift shop. You're going to find a lot of those Disney items here as well as magic bands and you're also going to find uh, kind of those more generic items that you might need like snacks, drinks, lunchables, you know, the things you might want last minute on your trip. If you're snacky, it's been a late night or you just need to feed yourself and your kiddos. You can also find those last minute necessities that maybe you forgot or you just didn't realize you would need. So even those little medicines, diapers, um, Tylenol, little things that you will probably need on your trip and either forgot or ran out of it. All right, continuing on. First, you are going to find the DVC desk here. 
They're going to have all of the information for you if you're curious about the DVC. And they also offer open house opportunities. So if you want to see what one of those rooms might look like, they can set you up with that. Now, in the same room, this is where you're going to find two different restaurants, one of which is 1900 Park Fair. It was a character buffet restaurant and it had a breakfast daily that was a super califragilistic time. It's where you used to be able to find Mary Poppins and her friends. And then at dinner, you could dine with Cinderella and her family. Now, unfortunately, this has not returned since the pandemic. Wait, there's been breaking news. It actually turns out that 1900 Park Fair is going to reopen April 19th, and you can find all of our favorite friends and some new ones there. Pretty exciting, but of course, make sure to check out the Ollers.net blog for all of the full updates and the new menu. Right next to it is where you can find the Grand Floridian Cafe, and that is open. This is the Grand Flo's kind of casual restaurant. It features southern cooking salads and sandwiches. This is actually one of my favorite spots. We really love it. You can almost always find like a brunch reservation here, and my family loves coming here before we do a good Magic Kingdom day. Highly recommend it. Okay, there's actually still more to see inside, but because we're down here, we're going to check out the outside, and then we'll head upstairs and see a few more things. Just stay with me. Okay, so we have stepped outside of the main building, uh, right where we were with the Grand Flo Cafe, and we are going to head to one of our favorite spots in Disney World, which is the quick service right here around the corner. Okay, we have finally made it over. This is Gasparilla Island Grill, and we are going to be stopping in. I already placed my mobile order, but before we get over there, because I do want to have one of our favorite treats, we're going to go right here to the right and find Arcadia Games. So here it is, Arcadia Games. This is just like most of the Disney World um, resorts game room for kiddos to have fun, burn off some energy. Okay, so here it is, Gasparilla Island Grill. It's a takeout quick service establishment, usual assortment, kind of burgers, hot dogs, sandwiches, chicken, ice cream, but for those things, that's not what I'm getting. Okay, so this is it. This is the house made mac and cheese. This whole portion with a side of fries is only $9.29. Uh, it's super shareable, one of our favorites. I'm so excited to dig in, and frankly, I actually find any excuse to have this. Okay, I'm pumped. The last time I had this was during a perfect day I got to do by myself and frankly I had to eat it real fast in my car because I underestimated how long it would take to get this. So cheers. I do think it's a step above your normal Disney mac and cheese. It's not plastic cheese either. It just feels a little bit higher quality. I love it. I think it's delicious and I think this portion is massive for less than $10. If your kiddo is looking for that classic craft mac and cheese, something you'd heat up in the microwave, this might not be their, their cup of tea. It might be a little bit too different for them. So don't bank on it being like your normal mac and cheese, although it is, it's fairly straight across the board. But if you have a picky kiddo or you're picky yourself, just be aware before you go and order it. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna die happy here. So. Okay, stepping back outside now that we've had our most perfect lunch. This is one of my favorite views at the entirety of this resort. I just think it's so beautiful and you can see on the water and at the very, very edge over there, you can just see the top of Cinderella Castle. Can you see me now? I can see you. So this area right over here, this is the captain's shipyard. This is where you're gonna find kind of the recreational watercraft. You can actually rent these boats and take them out onto Seven Seas Lagoon, fishing excursions and boat rentals. But it's a nice little perk to have if you're staying at the resort and you're doing a simple day here. This is also where you can find the firework cruises. Um, they start at $449. It includes a driver and you can get up to 10 guests. You get to go out on the water during the fireworks. So it's a really kind of special experience that not a lot of people get to do. Now we are going to continue on towards the back to show you one of my favorite restaurants actually in Disney World, Narcoosie's. All right, so here we are. This is kind of towards the back of the resort, if you kind of can count that towards the back of the resort. So this is Narcoosie's. This is actually one of my favorite restaurants in Disney World. I really love it. It's a signature restaurant featuring seafood, steak, chicken, and there's a waterside setting. It's just really beautiful. It was actually recently renovated with a brand new menu, and I have been lucky enough to come twice. I think this restaurant is so wonderful. It is definitely one of those nicer, more signature experiences, but if you are looking for a really good splurge, you love seafood, and you want something that's a little bit different, I think this is a great option. Personally, I loved the ocean charcuterie board. It was just different and fun, and I really enjoyed it, but definitely a splurge. 
So right here next to Narcoosis, you're actually going to take a path to the left if you want to take the boats to Magic Kingdom. That's one of the perks about the Grand Floridian is there are three different types of transportation. You can actually take the monorail to Magic Kingdom, you can take the boats to Magic Kingdom, and you can actually take buses to the rest of the parks. So of course it is a more signature nice resort, but it's a nice little perk. And also there's Space Mountain back there. Oh, I love it here. Okay, so headed back towards that main building, uh, first you're gonna find a big lovely pool right here on the side. This is the courtyard pool, and this is the original and the bigger of the main two pools. Now this one is fun. There's not as many uh, thematic elements, not as much theming, but it's large, fairly quiet actually, and has the courtyard bar which has some good frozen drinks, regular drinks, and just some more kind of bar themed food if you don't wanna go back inside or to Gasparilla for lunch. Now, as we're walking around, we've kind of already talked about the maps, but luckily there are always going to be these kind of general uh, layout maps in case you need anything. And it's kind of helpful because this is a fairly large resort in the sense of there's a lot of big buildings and you might not be able to find them. So right here is the courtyard pool where we just were. And then you're gonna find different buildings like Sago K, Conch K, Key, Sugarloaf, Boca Chica, Big Pine Key, the main building, and then the villas at the Grand Floridian. And also there's laundries in all of the buildings, which is really nice because that is not always something you find at Disney World, is laundry for every building. Now, as we're headed to the next pool, um, one thing I am going to point out is more construction that is still happening around the Grand Floridian, and it's happening at a lot of resorts here in Disney World. So just kind of be prepared. Make sure you're checking the Disney World calendar so you know what's being worked on when you're here because it can disrupt your trip. It's going to be a little bit louder. It might disrupt how you walk around the resort and just kind of general vibes. So be aware of that before you book any of your stays at Disney. Now, this is the next pool. This is the beach pool. It's kind of the other more themed pool. Uh, it's maximum of four feet deep, so not as deep and not as, um, you, you're not able to swim as much. It has the beach pool water play area as well as the beach's pool bar and grill, and there's a campfire and beach over on the other side, which we're definitely gonna check out. But what's so cute about this one is it, it is Alice in Wonderland themed. That is the Mad Hatter's hat up there that does fill up with water and then dump on the kiddos, or you, if you're having a lot of fun. Here's that lovely beach that we mentioned. It's actually not the only one here at the Grand Flo, but it is nice, has beautiful views of the Polynesian, and they even have some seating set up out here, which is just really nice. Here's another view of the pool as well. There goes his hat, lots of fun. Here's the other pool, as well as the pool bar. There's a lot more seating and it's a lot larger in this area. This is also the campfire that we talked about. Now this is where they're going to do those s'mores at night. You can actually come out at a lot of the Disney resorts and they have special s'mores. You can have them, there are free versions and then you can also do a nice, really fun upgraded version where it's a Mickey s'more. Highly, highly recommend, especially if you are not in the parks and you're looking for stuff to do around your resort. Now we are going to sneak around the side here to check out one of the most special things I think here at the Grand Floridian and that is the wedding pavilion. So if you didn't know, Disney does weddings all throughout Walt Disney World and the resorts, but they have one very specific wedding pavilion that frankly is lovely. This is Disney's wedding pavilion. Now we can't go inside today. You actually do need to have, uh, you actually do need to be a guest of the wedding or someone who's planning a Disney wedding to kind of be able to head inside so we're just gonna admire it from afar but it is really beautiful I love Disney fairy tale weddings which is a show on Disney plus so I've seen a lot about this and I've actually been able to head inside and there is a window that is like a magnifying glass basically and it makes it look like the castle is right behind you it's very neat super cool and something you can only find here at the Grand Floridian this venue also holds up to 250 guests and that near perfect view of Cinderella Castle just makes it all really special there's also so Frank Studio over here, which can give you more information about the weddings in general. Just, just nice and exciting. And I love a fairy tale wedding. 
also right next to the fairy tale wedding pavilion is where you're gonna find the villas at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. This is a separate check-in for DVC and you can also find the DVC Club Information Center here as well. Okay, so here we are. This is the DVC specific check-in and you can already start to see some of those subtle Mary Poppins touches. They even have chess over here, which if you're smart enough to play chess, kudos to you, I am not. Again, just tons of subtle Mary Poppins touches. If you don't know the movie or the art super well, you wouldn't probably pick up on it. Which is Okay, so we're walking out of the DVC. We're actually coming through the back side of that main building to show you another part that is one of my favorite parts of this resort. Um, and mainly it's just because I can pretend like I can afford to stay here and I think that's why I enjoy it <laughs> Okay, so this is it my purse. I just I need you guys to know I just hit my elbow with my phone because I was talking with my hands even though you can't see me and now my hand is numb <gasps> Okay so now I guess I have to go into the spa and treat myself because I'm in pain. Well, if we have to. But this is the Grand Floridian Spa. It's called Senses and I absolutely love it here. Now I don't want to go inside. I don't want to ruin anyone's peace, anyone's tranquility. So we're just going to kind of peek in the windows. But this is a full spa. You have the full spa experience here and you can book through Disney's website. It's so nice. I have had the privilege to come here. I've actually had a massage for my birthday here. It is so nice. It's so relaxing. Thing. And I think it's a really nice way to kind of experience something new at Disney um, that's a little bit more of a splurge, but it helps you relax. And sometimes, as much as I love Disney World, it's not the most relaxing vacation. It's actually very tiring. So this is a great way to enjoy Disney amenities and have a more relaxed day. This is also the same area where you're going to find the fitness center. You know, you do need your magic band or card to enter. Not anyone can go in, but it's a super, super nice facility. And I can't go inside because I don't have my magic band. This is also the same area where you can find the sport courts uh, if you're looking to be a little bit active because you've already walked 15 miles and that just probably wasn't enough. You can come out here, shoot some basketball and hopscotch. And I think I have to shoot some basketball. So let's get it. Leave it on a high note. Okay, after probably what was like the most successful round of basketball I've ever seen, we're gonna head back towards the Port Gaucher, see the rest of the resort, and then maybe hop on the monorail. Okay, back under the Port Gaucher, and now walking past the cool cars that we talked about to check out the convention center. Because if you didn't know, there is a convention center here. This is also the way you're gonna find the bus stop if you're headed to other theme parks. There you go, bus stop. Convention Center. Lots of stuff you need to know about this way. Alrighty, here we are. So this is the Convention Center. It is 27,037 square feet. It includes a grand ballroom as well as eight smaller rooms and weirdly enough, some fuel rod stations. You can also find the business center in here, which is gonna have a lot of things that you might need if you need to print anything. And we actually have found like SD cards and stuff in here and Quincy and I, we pretty much, we love it. We love the business center. We've spent a weird amount of time in here. Okay, we are headed back, but there is one thing over here that I kind of did want to point out as well. And this is where you can find the walkway to Magic Kingdom. So that is one of those things. It is fairly new, um, but there is a walkway to Magic Kingdom now. So if you are feeling uh, in the mood to kind of get your steps in a little early, because again, you know, you're only at Disney. So like, what are you gonna do? Walk 15 miles a day and not work out? It, you, you know, you wanna be a little bit proactive there, friends. So if you're feeling in the mood to be a little bit proactive and get your steps in early, or if you are in a rush and you don't really have time to wait on transportation, there is a walkway actually, which is very nice and convenient, especially if you're coming home at the end of the night. And again, you don't wanna wait on those long lines. You don't wanna wait on people. There's a walkway. Okay, we've made our way back into the lobby, into the main building, and now we're gonna check out what's all upstairs and then head towards the monorail station. So I'm taking the side stairs and I just wanna tell you, so there's this massive doyle. And every time I see it, I think about the time that I told my husband it was hand 
stitched, knitted, however you do this, uh, by Lily and Disney, because I think it's funny sometimes to just tell a fib, like as a small harmless joke, and I really had him going. I was like, it took her 10 years, and Walt really loved it. That's why it's here. So I highly encourage you to play a little prank on your family. It's very funny, and now I think of, <laughs> I think of that every single time I'm here at the Grand Flow. Wait, what? Okay, so we made our way upstairs, and now let's check out some dining options that I personally have never gotten to experience, but really hope to one day. Okay, so right here, after the stairs you come up, this is where you're going to find the entrance to Citrico's and Victoria and Albert's. Victoria and Albert's is a dining centerpiece of Grand Floridian, if not all of Disney World. It's ultra elegant, has a menu selected daily by the chef, and there is a very nice dress code. It has received Triple A's illustrious Five Diamond Award, the Forbes Travel Guide Five Star Award, and a glowing Zagat review and a host of other accolades. There is actually a full review up on the channel right now with Quincy and Breedlove if you want to check it out and I highly recommend that you do. Now right next door to Victorian Alberts is where you're going to find Citrico's. It's an upscale expensive restaurant with the Mary Poppins theme. The menu is crafted by chef Andreas Mendoza and it features Florida cuisine with kind of a Mediterranean influence. It was renovated in 2021 with a new dish and atmosphere and kind of reflects more of those Mary Poppins vibes I'll say. Now both of these are something I'm really interested in doing, but in particular, Victoria and Albert's is kind of one of those like bucket list things for a lot of Disney people, myself especially. And I'm curious if you've ever been, I want to know, like, do you think it's worth it? Is this an experience you would recommend to people? Would you tell people not to go? I know Quincy and Breedlove's opinion, but you need to go check it out on the channel to find out theirs. But I want to know your guys' because you guys also have really good opinions and you know a lot of tips and tricks too. And frankly, I love learning. So you just tell me what you think of Victoria and Albert's. Like, should I start my savings account now for my 30th birthday? Or, you know, maybe hold off. 30 is a while away. Not that far, but like a few years. So I have time to save. All right, so continue in a loop around the top of the lobby. This is where you're going to find Enchanted Rose. Enchanted Rose is one of our favorite lounges in Disney. It is so beautiful, and it's Beauty and the Beast themed. Now, it's not open while I'm filming. It'll open later tonight, um, but it's just absolutely lovely and has wonderful views of the Grand Floridian up at the top. You can find signature cocktails, wine, beer, and then tapas and some shared plates here as well. Okay, we're continuing on, but I just have to say there's a wedding happening here today. That's so exciting and so much fun. It's so cool. Okay, here we are. This is M. Mouse Mercantile. This is where you're going to find those Disney souvenirs like children's apparel, toys, books, pins, watches, dolls. The things that kiddos and Emma wants, you know? the headbands, the, the matching dolls that I can match. That's the kind of stuff we're looking for here. That's so cool! <laughs> Happy wedding! Okay, so we checked out the merch, we checked out the wedding party, now we're here at Basin White. So this is Basin White. They sell beauty and bath products here, a lot of Disney kind of specific. They actually have soap shapers, which you've never seen these. They're so cute. Let me show you. Here it is, soap shaper. I hope it works. <laughs> and look, it's a little Mickey. And now I have to wash my hands, which is probably a good thing. I absolutely love Basin. It smells so good in here. You can actually make your own bath salt combo. They even have little bath bombs in the shape of Mickey's, like just lots of cute, fun stuff. If you're into this kind of thing, they even have Disney chapsticks. You can do mix and match, make your own Disney soaps. And I think these are really nice gifts that are kind of practical. If people, like if you have family members or friends who don't really love Disney stuff per se, but you want to get them something, I think this is nice, practical Disney that they can actually use, even if they don't want a Disney t-shirt or something. So lots of cute things. They also have one over in Disney Springs, although there are some more specific items here at uh, the Grand Floridian one. Okay, I had to leave Basin before I spent a lot of money um, because I really love it in there and it smells exactly like I want my life to smell. Next door to Basin though is where you're going to find Bibbidi Boppity Boutique, kind of. So this is Bippity Boppity Boutique. If you haven't heard us talk about it, they actually have several here in Disney World. There's one in Magic Kingdom and one in Disney Springs, but the Disney Springs one has not reopened, just like the one here in the Grand Floridian. Um, it's a really cute experience. It's where you get to kind of have your kiddos, anyone 12 and under, turned into a prince or princess. And sadly, it has not reopened here, but there is at least the one in Magic Kingdom. So that's mainly it upstairs, except for the monorail station, which we have not stopped at, but you kind of have to go. That is the perk for being on the monorail loop. 
All right, we are just in time for the monorail. So this is another one. We've kind of already touched on transportation, but this is gonna take you anywhere. This is gonna take you to the Magic Kingdom as well as Epcot. And then of course you can walk over to Magic Kingdom and then take the buses to the other parks in Disney Springs. So let's hop on and go to Magic. <laughs> Okay, made it to Magic Kingdom, took literally no time. I'm gonna run around here for the rest of the afternoon, head back to the resort, and then I'll see you in the morning for breakfast. Okay, crew, it's the next morning. The bed's 10 out of 10, really good. So now it's time for a little breakfast, and then we're gonna talk about if you should or should not stay here. We did come back to Gasparilla for breakfast because we're just doing something quick before we head out for the day, but I went with their Mickey waffle platter, and you can add Nutella for a dollar. Although, I will say, I expected this to be bigger. This was a, an extra dollar. I'll let you know if it's worth it. Um, and then it comes with bacon, and then I also got a caramel macchiato because you can get those here, which I'm very excited about. Okay, because it's fairly early, I'm gonna start off with our caramel macchiato. Delicious, super, super sweet. You obviously can ask for no um, extra flavoring or anything like that, but it's just a good, normal caramel macchiato. And I think it's really nice to have this here because sometimes if you're like me, I like something a little bit fancier, but the Joffrey's and Starbucks lines are very long. So appreciate the mobile order option for this one. Okay, Mickey Waffle. These are actually really good. They're nice and fresh, which you don't always find at a quick service. They're still really crispy on the outside, but soft on the inside. And the Nutella is small, but it's really good. And if I had gotten a banana to slice up and put on this, I think it would be just like absolutely chef's kiss. So, should you stay at the Grand Floridian? You cannot ignore the incredible transportation options that this resort offers. You got boats, monorails, the buses, and that really nice walking path to Magic Kingdom. So that is a really incredible perk and probably the number one perk of this particular resort. But with all of those perks, what about the pros and the cons? When it comes to pros, you do have the incredible views here that you really can't get anywhere else. Magic Kingdom right behind me. You can see the fireworks at night. You can also see the electric water parade at night. There's really a lot of beautiful views here. There's also the incredible theming. It's very subtle, very nice. One of the more luxurious resorts, probably the most luxurious um, outside of like the Four Seasons that you can get on Disney property. You can also find incredible dining options, some of the most special and unique dining options in all of Disney World. There are tons here. The quick service is a little bit smaller, but the quality of the restaurants here is, you can't touch it. So even though we do love it, it does have quite a few cons. You cannot overlook that price tag. It's, it's pretty expensive and it's really expensive for what is not a true luxury experience. Closest you're gonna get with Disney per se, but you have the Four Seasons not super far away and it's really not that much more expensive and sometimes this is more expensive and it just does not offer that same quality that you would find at luxury even though it does have the luxury prices. You also end up sharing buses sometimes between resorts because this is a smaller bus stop so it just takes up more of your time and if you do have to use the buses for the other theme parks it's a little bit of a hassle. And finally this one can actually get pretty busy so unfortunately a lot of people can't stay here myself included so when you're resort hopping or you're hanging out around Disney World people will come hang out especially during the holidays to see the incredible gingerbread houses and see all of the different offerings like the massive tree things like that so it can get really busy and pretty loud in the lobby so if you're paying that much and it's busy and you're not really getting a luxury experience it might not be worth it to you so with all of that being said i want to know would you guys stay here why or why not tell me in the comments thank you so much for hanging out with me and having a great stay at the grand floridian though if you like this video go ahead and like and subscribe now go check out our full tour of the boardwalk up on the channel right now i'll see you over there